he asked me to get a restraining order against him because he was like, at the time, he was so hysterical about us getting a divorce. He didn't want to get a divorce, and I wanted to get the divorce. So he felt in my safety it was better for me to get one. That's spooky. That's the ex-wife of Levy Aaron, the accused butcher of Brooklyn, whose disgusting kidnapping, drugging, murder, and dismemberment of an eight-year-old boy in that tight-knit Orthodox Jewish neighborhood in Brooklyn still has this entire town rattled. Even as police ponder whether this guy may have had other victims. Craig investigates. Although on July 11th, when eight-year-old Libby Kletsky disappeared, this whole community in Brooklyn came together to search for him. Rabbi David Niederman is president of the United Jewish Organization of Williamsburg. Tell me how this death has affected this community. It affected uh, all communities all over the city and worldwide as well. We all felt it is such a horrible act that could not be comprehended. It was the first time the young boy got to walk alone, a scene not uncommon in this part of New York City where Orthodox Jews dominate and feel safe and protected among their own. When you learn that this was a, a fellow Jew who is responsible or is a main suspect in the murder of this child, what was the response, what was the feeling, the gut feeling? It's a terrible letdown. This haunting surveillance video is likely the last image of Livy Kletsky alive. At 5.05 p.m., Livy Kletsky left his camp on 44th Street and 12th Avenue. He was supposed to turn right one block later to meet his parents. Instead, he was picked up on this surveillance camera walking to 15th Avenue, three blocks out of his way. He was lost. Livy continued along the long city streets block after block confused and disoriented. Finally, after walking nearly a mile out of his way at the intersection of Day Hill and 18th, Livy asked directions from the wrong person, Aaron Levy, who is going here to see his dentist. 35 minutes later, Levy was in a 1990 Brown Honda Accord with Levy Aaron, who subsequently brought the boy to his apartment, killed him there, and then dismembered the body according to statements that he made. Police caught up with Aaron, whose car was identified by eyewitnesses two days later. The shocking nature of the crime affecting even veteran top cop Ray Kelly and Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who visited the boys' Borough Park home this week to pay respects as his family sat shiva. We all should, uh, before we go to bed, uh, take a look at our children and recognize how lucky we are to have them and pray this doesn't happen to us and say a prayer for uh, the young boy and for his family. The tragedy also shined a light on neighborhood watch groups called Shamrim, operating within the strictly orthodox communities. Why do you think it's necessary that you have your own private security within these neighborhoods? Let us not kid ourselves. So many crimes are committed, and also we believe that we are a target. Now some are asking, was Levy known in the community, and did he try unsuccessfully to kidnap others? This father tells Fox Aaron approached his son six months ago. We didn't know who it was, and we wasn't sure if my son was exaggerating or not, so, and he only asked him to come into the car for a ride. And there are questions about a delay in contacting the NYPD. There have been uh, some criticism in the press about the fact that maybe the community didn't go to the police fast enough. They went to Shumrim instead. What are your thoughts? I think there was no lapse whatsoever. And the fact is that who helped solve the crime are the volunteers of the Shumrim Patrol and the people. This week, cops pulled boxes out of Levy Aaron's attic apartment, boxes reportedly with labels saying child's pants and blue child's spoon, pink cup. They're trying to determine if the lonesome loser is responsible for other missing children. Meantime, one of his de defense attorneys quit, citing moral issues. Gerard Marone said, I have three little boys. You can't look at your kids and then look at yourself in the mirror knowing that a little boy who's close in age to my eldest son was murdered so brutally. Geraldo. The cops were traumatized, too. They were. The ones who went into the scene. So it was an awful scene, Haralda. They asked where the little boy was. He pointed to the kitchen. They looked at the re bloody refrigerator, found the knives, the remains of the child. It was just an awful scene. Oh, God. What a freak.